the iPhone 10 or the X or whatever people are calling it these days. Either way, it's been out for a while and normally on a regular basis with past iPhones, you know, I've pre-ordered, I've been there the day it's launched and I've gotten it kind of as quickly as I could. But this time around, I hesitated. Not because I didn't like what Apple was producing or what they were announcing with the iPhone 10, but I couldn't decide whether or not it was worth a thousand dollars. Especially when there are phones out there that have very similar specs, similar screens or better screens, similar cameras, and honestly more freedom. And so I had this internal struggle for a couple months trying to decide whether or not it was going to be worth paying a thousand dollars to get the iPhone 10. And I'll be honest, I almost switched back to Android just because, like I said, there's a lot of phones out there that will match the specs of the iPhone 10. But after that two month internal struggle, I finally decided to just get an iPhone 10 and see what it was like, see if I liked it. And I gotta be honest, I'm really not that impressed. Now don't get me wrong, the iPhone 10, by all means and by every sense of the word is a flagship phone. The specs are great, the processor is great, the screen, everything about it, the camera, it's all really great and it's something that everyone should come to expect in a flagship device from Apple. But there's a few reasons why I don't think it's worth a thousand dollars and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, I'm not going to go over every single spec of the iPhone 10. By now, everybody pretty much already knows what those specs are. But I'm going to tell you guys a few of the reasons why I feel that the iPhone 10 just isn't worth a thousand dollars. Now, like I said, the iPhone 10, in every sense of the word, is a premium device. Out of the box, the phone feels really good. You know, it's got a solid weight to it. It looks fantastic. I mean, the glass back of the iPhone 10, I think, was a really good idea by Apple. And then the full screen is another thing that Apple did a really good job with. The downside of having the glass front and the glass back is the iPhone 10 has been called one of the most breakable iPhones ever. So, of course, that means the second that I got it, I put a case on it because... Well, I wasn't about to pay $550 to have my back replaced, or even $220 to get the screen replaced. That just wasn't. But it did kind of make me a little bit sad because when you throw a case onto the iPhone 10, you hide a lot of the design of the iPhone. And so I was a little bit disappointed that I was hiding the majority of what I thought looked really great on the iPhone 10. But speaking of the screen on the iPhone 10, I think Apple did a really good job with deciding to go with the OLED screen. They kind of sucked it up and made amends with Samsung or did whatever they needed to do to get that into the iPhone 10, and it was a really good choice. The colors on the screen are vibrant without being overly saturated, the darks are better, and just watching video on it looks good. I feel like a lot of Android phones kind of oversaturate the colors on their screen a little bit, and so with my iPhones I've always felt that they've done a really good job at getting the color gambit right on those, especially with the photos that I take myself. Speaking of the screen, something that everybody seems to be getting hung up on is the notch up at the top. And I really wish that people would just stop talking about it because it's really not that big of a deal. The notch for me, I never really noticed. The only time that it ever came into play was if I was watching YouTube videos or there was an application that didn't have the screen optimized for the iPhone 10. But that's something that every day the app developers are updating and more and more applications are being able to utilize the full screen display. And the notch, even when I'm watching YouTube videos or Netflix or whatever I'm watching, kind of just fades into the background, but you don't really notice it. It's so far off to the edge of the screen that the majority of what you're watching is in the center of the screen. And so for me, it really just wasn't a factor. It was more something that I just felt like people kind of blew out of proportion. One of the things that Apple always seems to get right is their camera. Their camera has always been, in my opinion, one of the best cameras around in a cell phone. The camera is something that everybody uses on a regular basis. Whether you're taking selfies, making videos, documenting a trip that you go on, making YouTube videos, it's something that your everyday consumer is now requiring in a smartphone. And Apple's done a pretty good job at pinpointing exactly what their users want in that camera. Yes, the front-facing camera does tend to overexpose or blow out a lot of the pictures, but in most situations, I was able to find that I could use the light adjustment on screen to kind of help compensate for that. One thing that I am pretty impressed with on the camera of the iPhone 10 is the slow motion. It actually works really well and they upgraded the capabilities of the iPhone X's slow motion camera so that it's even better now. Face ID was probably one of the things that took the most getting used to. I was used to being able to be laying in bed, I could pull my phone up, just use the fingerprint scanner and I could look at my notifications or I could get it into my phone. And that's not really the case with Face ID. Face ID works as good as Touch ID most of the time. But when I am wearing sunglasses, it doesn't really tend to work. From what I've heard, there are some sunglasses that will allow the IR rays to pass through and it'll still work. Uh, and you could probably turn off the attention feature for the Face ID, but I didn't want to sacrifice any of the security and 
having to type in the passcode when I'm wearing sunglasses really wasn't a big deal because I just don't wear sunglasses that often. You know, it's maybe when I'm driving and it's sunny, it's getting close to sunset or something like that. Other than that, I don't wear sunglasses. One of the parts of Face ID that I wasn't actually expecting to be as, as useful as it is, is passwords. Whenever I go to a website that requires me to log in or use a password, Face ID is activated, it looks at my face and it just auto fills that password. Now that is nice because it just automatically fills it in, but with Touch ID, it was already there. So I don't know exactly why that is the case now, that it doesn't fill it until it sees my face, but it was kind of nice to have it just already loaded in. Face ID works really well in low light or even dark rooms, so that is definitely a plus for Apple. Like I said, the only downside to using the Face ID is if I'm laying in bed and my face is halfway in my pillow and I, I pull my phone up to look at it, it's not going to unlock unless I use the passcode or I lift my face off my pillow and I completely look at it with my full face exposed. Which, when it's 6.30 or 7 in the morning and I do that, I really don't have any desire to lift my face fully off of my pillow. I'm still waking up, and so the last thing I want to do is lift my face completely off my pillow just to get my phone to unlock. In all honesty, I'm really not that impressed with the battery life on the iPhone 10. It didn't really last any longer than my 7 Plus. I still find that I'm charging it at least once a day as I'm using it heavily which was the exact same with my 7 Plus, and I thought that was gonna be something that was gonna improve with the iPhone 10, but it's really still the same. One thing that I know is a factor for me, as well as a lot of people, is the reachability on the iPhone 10. Because they got rid of the home button, and because they added the different features up at the top of the screen, it's harder to reach it one-handed. You know, with the home button, you could just double tap the home button, it would use the reachability, and you do have that option, you can slide down from the corner, but it doesn't really work as well or as quickly as the home button just double tapping it. I have kind of adapted to using it with one hand. Swiping down from the top I can do. It's definitely a lot harder than it used to be. It was a lot more convenient to just swipe up from the bottom. But now the only thing that that does is just take you home. And with the reachability I can use it with one hand and I can swipe down from the top for the control panel. But in terms of getting all the way across the screen to use the notifications, it's a lot harder. And I, I tend to use two hands. Now, overall, the iPhone 10, like I said, it is a flagship phone, and I would say that it's definitely worth what Apple used to charge for their flagship devices. But in terms of charging $1,000, I really just didn't see it. And the reason for that is because, I mean, there's a lot of other phones that will match the, the capabilities and the specs of the iPhone 10, but they're $730 or $500. Either way, if you feel like you can justify spending $1,000 for the iPhone 10, by all means, go for it. It is a great phone. It works flawlessly for the most part. Um, and I've been pretty happy with it. I just don't think that it's worth a thousand dollars. I would say it's closer to seven hundred, seven hundred fifty dollars, just like Apple used to charge for their flagship devices. Either way, thanks a ton for watching, and while you're here, check out some of my other videos. As always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of the future videos. We'll see you around. Oh look, special appearance by Jerry Rig. That's going in there. <laughs>